Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India continuing our effort to develop equations of motion and we all agreed that we will follow Newton's laws of motion where it says it is d by dt external force is equated to rate of change of linear momentum and if I expand it, it is m dv by dt plus v dm by dt for our stability analysis since the duration is small even if there will be very small fuel consumption during that study we will neglect it. We will say dm by dt is 0. Please understand we are putting it 0 because we are building our equations of motion for stability analysis, dynamic stability analysis which is a transient analysis, very small time we will be using. In practice, dm by dt is not 0 for an aircraft because lot of fuel consumption will be there, almost 30 percent of the weight will be fuel. But for stability analysis, dynamic stability analysis, since it is for a small duration, a transient analysis, we will assume mass remaining constant. So, dm by dt is 0, so I write this as m dv by d t. Now, I ask you a question. What is this v? This velocity vector is what? This is the velocity vector with respect to inertial frame. This is v with respect to inertial frame. The acceleration is respect to inertial frame. d v by d t is also respect to inertial frame because we are writing f equal to m a Newton's laws of motion, which is correct and valid only when you implement it in inertial frame. When I write such equation or anybody writes such equation, this is in your mind it is something like this. There is a mass, concentrated mass and there is an f, external f being applied on this concentrated mass and the effect of this mass, effect of this force is to cause an acceleration. This is typically the understanding if mass remaining constant. What is in your mind is like a point mass, the whole mass is concentrated at a point. But now, what happens, you see, for an airplane, what is happening for an airplane? Please understand this concept very clearly. If you understand this clearly, tomorrow if the vehicle is changed, instead of aircraft, it is a missile or a rocket, you will not find any difficulty in understanding. This, the moment I write f equal to m a, I am biased with an understanding that mass is a concentrated mass. But when I see an aircraft, I see it is composed of so many delta m, right. So, summation of delta m is actually the mass of the whole airplane, number one. Number two, forces, there are forces on the wing, forces on the fuselage, forces on this vertical tail here, if there is a landing here, there is a force here. So, it is not that one mass, point mass is there and resultant force is acting here. This force is distributed over the whole airplane, mass is distributed over the whole airplane. Now, how do I apply this concept F equal to m a? That is the question. If we go back to our 11, 12 standards, if there are, let us say, I take three masses like this, they are connected like this, 
here f 1 is acting, here f 2 is acting, here f 3 is acting. If you want to find the acceleration of this assuming there is no rotation, then how do I model it? How do I write f equal to m a? Remember, there we use the concept of center of mass. Okay? We will be using that concept also here, just to prepare yourself. You will see that whatever you have learnt in 11, 12, we will be using here as well. That is so important. So, let me draw a diagram. This is y b, this is x b body axis y b and z b and the location of delta m denoted by r bar measured from center of mass. What we are doing? We are trying to develop equation of motion or like we are trying to apply f equal to m a using inertial frame of reference. That means, whatever measurement will be made in terms of acceleration and velocities will be with respect to inertial frame. Now, I could write easily delta m as elemental mass and delta f is equal to I can write delta m d v by d t. Right? You know that f equal to m d v by d t, if m dot is 0. So, I have for an elemental mass which is acted upon by force delta f, I can write this expression. More importantly, v which is measured with respect to the inertial frame. So, somewhere this inertial frame is here. x e z e y e. This V is measured with respect to inertial frame, because writing Newton's laws of motion, this I can represent it like V c plus d r by d t, no objection. R is this, so what is the rate of change of r with respect to center of mass, and what is the speed of center of or velocity of center of mass with respect to inertial frame, if I vectorally add it. Right, and I can represent it like this. Okay, no issues. Now, what do I do? I start with delta f equal to delta m dv by dt. Okay. So, summation of delta f, let me write so that I can explain it, will be d by dt of summation of v c plus d r by d t into delta m. Right? I have done summation means resultant force vectoral, vectoral summation and v is v c plus d r by d t. So, d by d t of v is v c plus d r by d t into delta m. Right? Summation, summation is done. So, if I do this, then I can write easily f is equal to m d v c by d t plus d square by d t square summation of r d m. No objection? This I have done in last lecture also, but could you recall? 
what is this value RDM? We have selected the location of the body fixed axis at center of mass, and by definition of center of mass, RDM will become 0, 0 because of center of mass definition, right? Because uh, if, if you have forgotten, let me write this R center of mass is RDM by dm, right? The moment balance. So, if RCM is 0, because we have located the axis such that RCM is 0, because we have put this here, so naturally integral RDM becomes 0. So, this term goes. So, what you get is F equal to m dvc by dt. What he says? Let the mass be distributed. Let the force be distributed. But if you want to apply Newton's laws of motion, you need to find out what is the central mass of the distributed mass and assume whole mass is focused, concentrated at the center of mass and whole resultant force is applying, is being applied at the center of mass, then solve it like a point mass, you will get the acceleration because of external force F. So, we have come back to that understanding of point mass. That is the beauty of this analysis, right. So, when I write d V c by d t and if I ask you what is V c, V c should be for your understanding so that you do not forget. When I write like this means what? I e, j e, k e are the unit vector along the inertial frame and u e, v e and w e are the component of v measured with respect to the inertial frame resolve along i e, j e and k e of inertial frame. Right? So, all you are talking about inertial frame here, we are not talking about body frame at all here now till this point. Once we completed the linear motion, that is we write f equal to m d v c by d t. We know that this airplane has not only translation motion, it also has angular motion. When it comes to angular motion, you know it is the angular momentum that will decide, right. That is in a linear case, we say the external force will cause change in the linear momentum and in a similar way say external moment will cause change in the angular momentum right so we have to use this equation external moment m will cause rate of change of angular momentum h h is the angular momentum Please understand, we are all operating with respect to inertial frame. Okay. Now, what is the understanding of angular momentum? You know, we say angular momentum as the moment of the momentum, right? R cross m v. Go back to eleven, right? It's the moment of the momentum. So we'll use that definition. We'll write delta m as d by dt of d delta h, which I can write as d by d t of r cross v. This is r cross m v, angular momentum. Remember, if this is body moving with a velocity v, this is r, and the angular momentum is defined as r cross m v, which we say moment of the linear momentum about a point or an axis. Same definition has been used, this is r cross m v only, right. Also, you know v equal to v c plus d r by d t, which I can write now v c plus omega cross r. 
Is this clear? dr by dt is nothing but omega cross r. Say for example, if this body is rotating with omega, then what is the velocity here? Omega cross r, right? So omega is a generic three-dimensional, so omega cross r is there. So I can replace dr by dt by omega cross r. What is to be important to be known is that omega is about inertial frame. This omega is the angular velocity. Angular velocity with respect to inertial frame. This is important. R bar was measured with respect to center of mass, right? which is very again simple. Again, I repeat, if I am rotating about the CG like this, if the, if the point of reference is at CG, omega cross R will be 0 r is 0, at any other point the velocity will be, if I am moving like this and rotating like this, it will be v c plus velocity introduced because of omega cross r. So, vectorally that has to be added. Okay. Now, let us do a little bit of algebra. So, h angular momentum I can write as summation of r cross v d m, which again I can write h is equal to summation of r cross for v I will write v c plus omega cross r then d m. Nothing great I have done, v I have replaced by v c plus omega cross r. And this again I will expand, I get summation of r d m cross v c plus summation r cross omega cross r d m. By now, you are smart. Summation r d m is by definition of center of mass. This is 0, because you have located the axis at the center of mass. So, this term goes. So, you only have this term. Summation r cross omega cross r d m. That is equal to angular momentum h and these are all done with respect to the inertial frame. So, I always keep on repeating all in terms of inertial frame. We like to understand by expanding this. Before we do this, please understand r is the distance of any elemental mass respect to central mass. Omega is the angular velocity of the rotating frame that is the body which is rotating with respect to inertial frame and delta m is the elemental mass. So, what I do? I write r as x component resolved along i e y j e plus z k e. i j i e j e k e are the unit vector along inertial frame x e y e z e. So, I am resolving r, expanding r with respect to inertial frame. Similarly, I write omega, the rotational velocity as p i e plus q j e plus r k e. No problem. It is the angular velocity of the airplane resolved along inertial i e j e and k e x. So, now if I do omega cross r and I will simply tell you, you can do yourself, this is i e j e k e p q r and x y z. If I do this, if I am not mistaken, I will get omega cross r as please you should do yourself also. Do not blame me if there are some mistake. I e minus j e into p z minus r x plus k e into p y minus q x. Right? You know that, how to do it? Q z minus r y minus j 
R x V z. So, you could see that uh, edit. You could see here I e into Q z minus R y then minus J e into P z minus R x plus K. What is our aim? We define R cross omega cross R. So, what will happen? I erase this now. Omega cross R expression is there. And now, we write R cross omega cross R. You can do mechanically. So, it will be again I e J e K e and then it will be x y z and then it will be q z q z minus r y then r x minus p z and then p y minus q x. Again, mechanically you do i e into this, this minus this, minus this. So, you will get simply this vector multiplication. Once we again do this operation and put it into this equation here, you will get this is whole this term will be equal to summation p y square plus z square minus q y x minus r z x, then this is d m, right, minus summation p x y minus q x square minus q z square plus r y z d m and then plus summation r x square minus p x z minus q z y plus y square r d m you could see here, first one is I e component, second one is J e and third one is K e component. I will strongly advise you must do these simple operations right? and do not take me to court if there are some sign mistakes here. I assume that you will do it and you will cross check. Okay? So, if I do this now, further operation, I can write, you could see what is summation of y square plus z square d m y square plus z square d m nothing but i x x moment of inertia about x axis. Right? Similarly, the cross moment of inertia all those things you can do and finally, you could see that if I do this operation what I get is important. I get h equal to h x i e plus h y j e and h z k e, where h x is nothing but the first term with the i e. So, you will get p i x x minus q i x y minus r i x z and h y will get as minus p i x y plus q i y y minus r i y z and s z is equal to minus p i x z minus q i y z plus r i z, where we will appreciate i x y is x y d m i x z is x z d m like that. Okay. What does p q r? p q r are the components
component of angular velocity of the airplane with respect to the inertial frame resolved along i e, j e and k e that is along the unit vectors of inertial frame. We are all talking about inertial frame now, right. This should be very, very clear. Only thing is that we have initially realized that if I operate with respect to inertial frame, then as the airplane rotates, this moment of inertia, they will go on changing, because as rotation, the distance of the delta m from the x, y, z axis will also vary. So, then this i x s, i y, i x y, i, i x s, all this will go on changing as the airplane rotates and motion. That will make things complicated. So, we will try to use this and see how best, what should we do, so that we can use it in body frame. So, that if I am operating in body frame, then even if the body rotates, the moment of inertia will not change, because the axis also will change. The trick is, you operate in the body frame, but do not violate the Newton's laws condition, implementation condition, it should be respect to inertial frame. The way out is, yes, you can do that, as long as you apply a correction, then life will be simpler. Okay? And next lecture, we will talk about how to operate in a body frame and still do not violate the condition that if I want to apply F equal to M A, I need to operate in inertial frame. Thank you very much.